Hi guys, welcome back to another video of Hedgewood channel. So we will be discussing about the veterinary anesthesiology that is the unit 2 from veterinary surgery and radiology. So today's topic is chemical restraint of wild and zoo animals. So we are all familiar with zoo animals and we have been to many zoos till now. So we have seen the they will be taking some animals for some examinations and all or for some surgical procedures and all. So they will be restraining physically and they will be restraining chemically to have a smooth process. So we will be discussing about those chemical restraint methods which are used in the wild and zoo animals case. So if you haven't subscribed this channel yet, Feel free to subscribe and hit the bell button for more updates. So moving to the introductory part, with the advent and understanding of new drugs and the new delivery systems, chemical restraint has now become a practical procedure in last two years. Tranquilizing or sedation of animal is only resorted to, that is when physical or mechanical means are not feasible or become a difficult pattern. So, precise knowledge of the pharmacology of the drugs is utmost essential before restraining any animal. So, tranquilization or sedation is practiced for animal immobilization. So, the advantages are immobilization causes little disturbance and physical damage is negligible. Selected individuals can be captured. That is, if at all we want to pick one or two animals from a very big source, we can easily take it. Specific time of capture can be calculated and we can work. Rapid shifting of portal epigments to the field conditions. Proper treatment of the wild animals. Prevent death by surgical management in many conditions. So, moving to the disadvantages. Procurement of drugs from foreign countries is cumbersome and expressive. So there are many drugs which have to be specifically used in some species of animals for chemical restraint. So we have to get it from the foreign countries and the process is actually time consuming. Undesirable side effects may occur. Careless use of drug may lead to human death because if at all the drug delivery is not proper means animals will be attacking and that can even lead to human death. Sometimes darker animals may die due to capture myopathy or stress. So the properties of ideal immobilization drug. It should not cause tissue irritation. Should be rapidly eliminated from the body. Recovery and induction period could be calm. Should have wide margin of safety. It should have suitable stability, it should have availability of reliable antidote, should have no drastic effect in pregnant animals, should have less risk to the wildlife veterinarian handling the drug, should have no permanent damage to the wild animal, should have suitable stability. So moving to the monitoring of anesthesia. So anesthetic monitoring is required to determine any complication because whenever we are giving anesthesia to animal we have to completely monitor the animal's physical status so the palpebral reflex in palpebral reflex the animals under the light plane of anesthesia they will bring the eyelid in response to the touch whereas nystagmus the eye flicks rapidly from one side to the side with like uh, metatomidin ketamine or xylosine ketamine anesthesia. In case of movement, movement of the lips or the head or the neck often depicts that the animal is waking up and additional drug is needed. So next is body temperature. A temperature for which animal is cause for concern and the animal should be cooled if possible. Heart rate. It varies from species and it can be varying from the drug administered. We can actually check it through the stethoscope or from the femoral arteries. Respiratory rate, it will vary according to the drugs administered or the species. 
and we can actually check it through the chest movement. Mucous membrane color. That is actually uh, whenever it is having a lack of oxygen, it will be purplish or bluish color. Generally, the color of mucous membrane will be pink. The next is the anesthesia of wild ruminants. So tympani. Actually, ruminal tympani is a very common in case of wild ruminants. And we have to check for uh, regurgitation and all. So that can even lead to aspiration pneumonia whenever regurgitation is occurring in, in case of blot, in case of wild ruminants. That will lead to aspiration pneumonia. Next is hypoxemia. So it is actually common complication found in ruminant anesthesia. So we have to closely monitor the oxygenation. So position, it is preferable to maintain ruminant internal recumbency if possible so that it might decrease the chance of tympany. So whenever the animal is in internal recumbency, the chance of tympany is very less. So next is myopathy that is actually happening. So hyperthermia and trauma. Next is mental stress. So reasons for restraining. So while the animals are chemically restrained for the following reasons, that is animal translocation or transportation, to study the ecology and population estimate, for veterinary studies, to relieve wild animals in distress, control of animals causing distress to the public. Various devices used for injecting the drug from a distance are drug darts, projectile syringes, etc. So the main drugs, ketamine hydrochloride, ketamine is actually a dissociative anesthetic who will be acting by blocking the NMDA receptor. So next is xylazine. Xylazine is actually alpha-2 adrenergic agonist drug. Next is thiopental sodium. Those are actually the barbiturates and these are actually mainly used as anti-convulsive, anti-hypnotic drugs. Next is the main drug is the telazole. It is actually the combination of zolazepam and tylethamine. Zolazepam is actually a benzodiazepine drug and tylethamine that is actually a dissociative anesthetic. So telazole is very common. Next is the tylethamine and zolazepam combination that is from Virbac that is zolethyl. So next is the acipromazine injection. Those are actually the phenothiazine tranquilizers used as sedative tranquilizer in case of wild animal sedation. So in case of primates, we will be mainly using ketamine and xylazine. In case of chimpanzee, we will be using ketamine xylazine. In kangaroo, we will be using xylazine ketamine combination or thiopendol. In case of antelope, we will be using the xylazine ketamine. In case of deer, we will be using xylazine ketamine. Camels, we will be mainly going for the xylazine intramuscular injections. In case of bears, we will be going for xylazine ketamine combination because xylazine ketamine combination, they will be having the calming effect, the antipsychotic effect and a small effect of analgesia, a very small effect of analgesia. In bison, we will be mainly using the chloral hydrate. In Asian elephants, uh, we will be using xylazine and all. Sometimes etorphine acipromazine combinations will be also used. In case of reptiles, we will be using ketamine or xylazine. For snakes, we will be using ketamine or tylethamine or any benzodiazepines like tylethamine plus zolazepam that is pirazo or zolatil. Now moving to the drug delivery systems. So these are the darting syringes with feathers. This is the squeeze cage. Next, this is the dart gun with dart syringe. We'll be using for darting. We'll be loading the drug in this syringes and we will be connecting it with the gun and we will be aiming at the animal and we will be shotting. This is the dart gun. Thank you.